Hey, good afternoon, YouTubers, Facebookers, party people alike. This is Clay with Clay's AC and Auto Repair and Clay Motion here in Grand Rapids, Michigan. If you find this video to be helpful, please subscribe, click the notifications, all that jazz. Send me your wonderful comments. I greatly appreciate them. If you want to reach out to me on the Facebook, you can hit me up under Clay's AC and Auto Repair, and I'll try to help you with your automotive-related needs. I can't help you with your money troubles. I have them, too. So today, we're going to try to be as basic and as simple as possible. Uh, we're going to remove this ridiculously broken dash we're going to replace the heater core in here um, and we're going to replace it with something a little bit better what i'm not going to do is i'm not going to show you every nut bolt and screw that we take out and the reason i'm not going to do that is because there's tons of videos showing you how to do that i've seen them on the internet they're 20 minutes long i'm going to try to make this like a five or ten minute video and just tell you the hard things and just tell you the steps so you know what you're going to be in for i'm sure this is a daunting job i've done this job before uh, the last time I did it, I just changed the dash pad, so it is possible to change the dash pad without removing the whole dash assembly. One of the other things that I want to point out to you, if you're changing your dash pad because it's all cracked and separated, which is pretty much the primary need of this video, is I'm going to show you something that you can do to save yourself a couple bucks. Okay, so before we get going on that, I just wanted to show you this. Generally, this piece is broken, and this is the filler piece that goes inside there. It's difficult to find these for the 2002 to the 2006 version. So I actually took this out of a 2008, which is actually different. And, and how it varies is how it affixes inside the clip holes right here. What we're gonna do is, if I remember right, so the front portion of it actually fits in the same as the, the older style. The rear portion are turned horizontal and these are vertical. So what we're gonna have to do is clip these off and we're probably gonna use like a double-sided tape or Velcro or something to hold this piece down to this piece. The reason for that was when we removed this dash, I paid someone to remove this broken dash that wasn't all that great to begin with. They actually just demolished this part. So when you're taking this out, just be really careful. Pay attention to where the clips are and use your screwdriver to pull it up easily. You won't have to bust it that way, and you'll be able to use it if you're taking one out of the picky part like us. The first steps we're going to do is we're going to remove the, the A-pillar covers. We're going to remove the steering column, and we're going to disconnect our battery. So what it looks like to us, we're going to drop our steering column down. We're not going to remove it. It looks like that we got three bolts over here, these bolts in the top of here, two down there on the bottom, and the rest of them up here and then we got three over here and we suspect that this bad lad is going to come out then we have to unplug all the electrical connections but if that's the case it actually might end up being relatively easy okay guys so a little stuff that we're finding out this tab is held on on the opposite side it's just a pen that goes in there so you have to lift this up a little bit this bracket has to be undone right here and then up underneath there, we took out four bolts that held our steering column in, and we removed the main wiring connector. Uh, let me see. So th that didn't have to be removed, sorry. Um, it was right here, plugged into here, this, this swing latch right there. And then up here is an aluminum bracket, and there was two screws that we had to take out. Now our dash is free, and we're gonna pull it back and see what we have to unplug and more than likely some of the duct work is probably screwed down to the box you got to understand the heater box is going to stay in this vehicle but look at what we've got undone pay attention to our progress because we might not point it out in the video and if you see it undone then you undo it so as you can tell we almost got the dash out i'll be honest with you wasn't that hard um just because our dash was broken that didn't really make it any easier for us. The same bolts had to come out and everything else. Uh, we had to disconnect the ALDL, which is your data link connection, because uh, it goes up into the main wiring harness. But we pretty much only unplugged three or four things over there yeah, on the steering column side, and we're ready to take this dash out of this bad lad. So this is what it looks like with the dash removed. And I want to point out that the parking brake is still in there, that aluminum bezel is still in there. So hopefully you guys were able to just take out you know, I, I think it was like 15, 20 bolts. Um, most of them were up here in the, the top cowl right there. And then the other ones were along the side and down the center, if I hadn't already mentioned that. Over here, you can see the plugs that 
we disconnected this bottom one the main one it's blue in here and we had to undo the linkage to the parking brake and i just pried that right out of there popped out sprung down so we'll have to spring that back when we go to put it back in depending on if you took all the bolts out of the outside first up on the inside there's only three there's two nuts one there one right down there and then the screw down here on the pillar and that removes the heater core from the inside okay now that you've removed your dash cluster and your your dash assembly out of the inside of the car we got a couple small things that we have to do on the outside of the car one of the things we need to do is either take it down to a auto repair shop and have them evacuate your freon and the reason that you're going to do that is we don't want that expelling out into the atmosphere enough said the next thing that we're going to have to do is we're going to have to remove the lines now i'm going to show you real quick right here how this works because i think it's going to be much simpler to show you from here than it is to show you what's going on back there we actually have to remove the two lines that are up on the firewall but we can remove this line from right here for the video so we can show you how that's done so what we got up inside here is a little spring and i'm going to show you that when i remove the line uh and that spring needs to separate out so how we're going to do that is we got these little little line tools uh can't tell you really which ones work better but what happens is this little prong goes inside there and you can see that on these this will go up inside there and it'll it'll make it'll push that spring away from there so you're able to remove the line off of there now we just got to figure out which sizes are needed to be able to do that successfully so what we're going to do is we're going to get that up in there and we're also going to make sure that this line is spinning on here and sometimes it works a little bit better to have a little bit of penetrant on there but then once we get that hopefully as we pull down on this we can push up on our tool right here and then hopefully it comes off which it is kind of it is not easy <laughs> but it comes right out and then you can see how the fingers got up in there and pushed in on that spring now we're removing this i think it's going to be easier to remove the dryer so we can pull this line back out of here like this and that's why i removed the air box and stuff like that so if yours has a dryer just like mine you're gonna loosen up the two 10 millimeter bolts and then you'll be able to flop that free and then you're gonna put your tool up in there and you should be able to pull this thing right out it's gonna take a little bit of pulling but you'll get it out now remember as you're putting the tool up inside there to pull back on the tool and push in and then pull your line you're gonna wiggle it around a little bit but once you got this line out of here it makes this line easier and then we can disconnect our heater hoses if you're doing the heater core or the evaporator. I've already taken the canister off and I'm gonna show you here in a couple minutes I've videoed them steps I wanted to show you down in here what you're doing with that tool that I'm about to show you is you're separating that spring out and it allows that to come out of there this fits on a coupler and you can kind of see it right inside there this goes up underneath that spring this little lip right here does so i think that's going to be much simpler now that you understand what you're doing and why you're doing it i just wanted to point out before you guys go to reassemble this take some dielectric and put it on these o-rings it'll save you some grief from there possibly be ha having a leak right there Okay, so the next thing we do after we've removed our AC lines is we're going to go ahead and take um, the hose clamp tool and it looks something like this and we're going to remove them two heater hose lines so we can remove our heater box. Now once you got the hose clamp compressed with your hose tool I recommend you take out some hose pliers and then that will allow you to be able to pull that out of that very confined space back there. If you're having trouble getting the hoses to disconnect from the heater core, you can cut the hose underneath here, underneath the hood, as close back there to it as possible because you still have a lot of 90 degree right here um, to be able to put the hose back on and then we can remove the clamps from the heater core when we remove the heater core box. Okay, so we got the, hamp, the clamp pulled back with the pliers and now the, the hose is stuck on the line so you kind of got to give it a spin. And Jeff's going to try to get the hose pliers up in there. And we're going to try to video it. 
am spinning it. And he grunts a lot, people, so, you know, don't mind him. He always sounds like he's doing something adultish. I think you pretty much get the idea. There it goes. And he'll have it pulled off, hopefully, here in a right second. There. He's got it off there, yeah. So we removed our computers and the bracket that holds it, and we had a nut right here. Sorry, the video is so out of focus there. So now that you got your heater box out, we're pretty sure that you can remove it without separating the heater box. We're going to give it a try. We'll know here in a couple seconds. Okay, guys, so hopefully the video was helpful. Subscribe, share, all that jazz. Remember, if anybody else can do it, you can do it too. And just in closing, uh, don't honestly believe that this was that bad a heater core to do. I literally had a harder time with the lines getting them off than actually mostly anything else because we figured out the steps fairly quickly to removing this. So we can probably have this put back together mostly today and that's a great day's worth of work uh did take us a couple hours maybe only an hour to get the dash out the dash was actually simple and then figuring out the rest of the steps that we needed to do so god bless you guys have a great day